Um, I know that as attorneys, or as in this case, judges, we don't always appreciate the, the nuances of other disciplines. Um, as an attorney, when we retain experts or when the court appoints experts, we, we do so because we're, we're seeking their knowledge and expertise in areas that we have none. In these circumstances, we're either having court appointed experts, or in this case, the litigants are securing their own experts, and they put together reports that the court has to determine whether or not they're going to be of assistance to the court in making a final determination of the case. I want those reports to express the opinions of the experts based on their expertise and their knowledge and their training and their specific knowledge of the case in question. I frankly don't want their opinion to be filtered through the litigant or the attorney. In regards to the circumstance of Dr. McMillan, the court has considerable problems and I totally, from what I do up here, trying to listen to people write, listen to objections, listen to the next question coming, and still trying to, to write and get, take notes, everybody can talk faster than I can possibly write. Uh, I recognize how difficult it is to try to listen and make notes and think all at the same time. But, and again, Dr. McMillan, I, I, I think he's an, an excellent uh, psychologist, and I have appointed him in this court, and I've used him as an attorney and have been impressed with his results. But in this particular circumstance, I, I am concerned where, where we recognize that there may be litigation in a case, or even is litigation, depending on the circumstances and when the notes were taken, where he is allowing one of the, uh, one of the, his clients to take the notes that he himself is going to rely on to write the report. an individual who has no training in, in the area of sci psychology, how do they identify what's important, what's not important, and how easy it is to include or not include something that, that could be significant? As a result of that, um, I have to have some serious question about the benefit of Dr. McMillan's uh, report in this matter. I, I recognize that, that experts or attorneys writing briefs, they, we make judgment calls about what we think has value and what we don't. And 
what is significant and what is not significant. And there could be a statement made by one of the parties that, depending on their tone or the manner in which they made it, you just feel like that's really not very significant. I don't even need to mention that in my report. And, and I would understand that. Um, but where we're relying on, on a party whose position is opposed to the person making the statements to take the notes, that's just a major problem for the court. As a result, the court is going to exclude uh, Dr. McMillan's report in this matter. In regards to Dr. Bennett, words have meaning, and, and when a report is issued that uses the term moderate, or at least a draft is put together that uses the term moderate, and then at the suggestion of the person that has retained them and paid them, or their attorney, that is that term moderate is enhanced to state on the upper spectrum close to severe. When you throw that word severe in, it garners a lot more attention, and it changes in the court's opinion the substance of the report. I understand submitting a draft to a party to look for typos or misspelled names or uh, errors that would be clear, be plain and understandable to uh, a layperson. But I have real problem with submitting it to the, to, to the participating party or their attorney to help make the expert's opinion clearer. That's the expert's job. I could understand an, uh, an attorney suggesting, doctor, could you define this term you're using to help make it clearer? That makes sense. But I, I have to say, I, I am troubled, and I, both of these are very qualified and very distinguished experts, but uh, I'm concerned there was too much involvement of Mr. Bator in the preparation of either of their reports. Therefore, the court is going to exclude reports of Dr. McMillan and Dr. Your Honor, before you... Bennett. Yes, you exclude Dr. Burnett. We didn't argue that. And could I, I just be heard for a moment on that? Your Honor, they, they submitted the affidavits that address that issue. Uh, I think the court has considered it. And I but, would ask... That let, me, let me say, Ms. Rogers, I, I have to say I, I've been worried about this. The only, the only thing I took out of town with me was this stuff. Um, but, Your Honor, the, the point I'm trying to make that's in Dr. Burnett's affidavit is this was not, it was following, we had a meeting with Dr. Burnett to talk about the situation. But now, wait a minute. He said moderate. And then, now, as in a the result, meeting, he told us it bordered on severe. When he sent the draft, it was moderate. Your Honor, that's and so we, we really just went back to him and said, we're, we're confused because at our, when we were talking about this in my office, you said it was in the moderate to severe and bordered on severe when we were discussing the various problems that he was seeing with Ramsey. And so we just went back to Dr. Burnett and said, why did you tell us one thing versus another thing that you put in your report? So it, it wasn't after the fact 
that we said, why are you putting in severe? It was, why did you change it from what we discussed at the office? And then he went, you're right, that's what I said in your office, in the office, and it, this does fit that. So that problem I don't there, see how counsel, that's not almost like correcting a typo. Your Honor, anymore. none of those facts are available other than through Ms. Rogers. And if she's going to testify, then I'm going to ask that she become a witness, and she probably won't be a lawyer anymore. Uh, but you, she can't submit facts like that and not become a witness. None of that is in the record anyway. Let, let me not say, Ms. Rogers, I, that's exactly what I was going to say because that's not what's in the affidavit. Let, let me look at it one second, Your Honor. And, Your Honor, I would also ask that since you've excluded Dr. McMillan's report, he also generated a supplemental report, and then I also want all of these session notes excluded because they shouldn't be in because that's what he relied on. He created them. If you're excluding his report, I don't see how we can use the session notes. Well, let me let me suggest. I, I think uh, let me let's let Ms. Roger finish looking, and then I'll try to expand or expound on what I was referring to. I'm looking at paragraph, paragraph 8, page, wait a minute, hold on just a second. Paragraph 8, page 2. Uh-huh. Mr. Bontorf had reviewed the draft version of the affidavit and suggested adding the phrase at the top of the range closest to the severe level. Right, but 11, paragraph 11 says, the changes I made at Mr. Butler's suggestion were to clarify somewhat a vague part of the draft affidavit which had been made, made by... Made my intended meaning clearer. The changes were also made after Mr. Butterf and I had a meeting with his counsel where we discussed my opinion that the case was approaching the severe alienation level. So that's what I'm talking about is we'd had a meeting and it's, it's outlined here. You don't need my testimony. You have it from Dr. Burnett and my clients here also. Yes, testify. that sounds like, if I just meant to tell you, let her finish, I'll let you address it. Go on. Were you through? And then when he sent the draft, Mr. Butter just asked him to clarify this. I'm confused because when we met in person, you said one thing and the draft. But again, Ms. Rogers, you're, something you're adding something to it that Dr. Uh, is it Burnett? I Burnett, it. yes. Burnett. I'm sorry. I get these names confused. Burnett doesn't really say in his affidavit. And... Um, but no, he does on paragraph 11. It, well, that's it. not quite that. Uh, when I look at paragraph 8, this is Mr. Bar Mr. Butorf's, uh, Butorf's opinion. Um, and like I say, I, I really think, and, and, you know, the Court of Appeals may look at this and say, you know, you know, attorneys and, and litigants need to have all sorts of input into these reports. I can just tell you when they do in this court, they, it dilutes the value of the report to the point that I don't want it anymore because it's not that person's opinion. If he thought it was bordering severe, I would have expected someone of his status to have said moderate to severe, moderate bordering on severe. That's what he said after Mr. Bothworth had reviewed the draft version of the affidavit and suggested adding the phrase at the top of the range closest to the severe level. That, that wasn't, that wasn't uh, the good doctor's position. It was, as far as the court's concerned, it was enhanced, enhanced at the suggestion of Mr. Bothworth. But, you know, some of these, you've got to remember the time period that this was. Some of these were evolving events. The events were occurring as, like, Dr. Burnett was retained in March or April, we didn't file until May, bad behaviors were continuing. And so, you know, he may have had the draft in part, he has a meeting with us, and then he sends it. I, I don't know, and again, um, exactly, but this is a very common thing is that experts send out a draft and they make changes. In this case, he's making it to be consistent with 
a conversation that he had had where he told us his opinion. So it, it, it's well, again, this is this is coming from you, which you know is argument, not facts. Right, but I have an affidavit that supports. Well, that. it it in from your point of view, it kind of supports it, but uh, in other areas, it seems to me clear. And and you know, when we when we use the term moderate, and then after talking to counsel and uh, and the, your client, you chip in the severe, it just makes the whole thing questioned by the court. Uh, well, Your so, Honor said it was the worst case you'd seen in your career, so well, I think yeah, me, going me, to severe is Let not me reiterate, it is. Yeah. But I don't need the report of either one of these esteemed doctors for me to see that. I sat here and saw it. I heard witnesses testify, so it absolutely is the most severe case. And frankly, all this parental alienation stuff, I don't need it at all to know there's a horrible problem. And I had to do so, or at least I felt like I needed to do something right away. Uh, and it, that was a great concern to the court because I realized it was pretty severe. It's about the most draconian thing I think I've ever done since I've been on the bench. Uh, but, well, and it, it helped the situation. So. Well, we can we can all hope that it did. And apparently, from what I'm what feedback I'm getting, it it apparently something has changed to make things better. But uh, to be real honest, I, I kind of think that I don't need the reports of either one of these doctors, at least under these circumstances, because I just don't think at this point they're going to. They're going to assist the, the trier of facts in making a decision in this case. Uh, so respectfully, I, I'm going to exclude their reports and any other report or notes that are generated or tainted by the assistance of, of Mr. Botwar. Does that, does, that, does that clarify my ruling as far as your concern, Mr. Yes, sir, thank you. Now, these are both excellent physicians. If they want to come in and testify based on what they saw or what they heard or what what information they had and give their opinion, not Mr. Bottorf's opinion and not Ms. Rogers' opinion, uh, then that's fine. I'm assuming Mr. Hayes has deposed them about what their opinion is. Uh, and he'll be prepared to cross-examine them. But I just don't think the reports help me at this point because it, it appears to me that they're tainted. And I, I think what, whatever the, the uh, American Society of uh, Psychologists or whatever their organization is, whatever their belief is, uh, we're, we're looking to them as the experts, not their clients, not the lawyers that have hired them. We're looking at them to make an informed uh, decision and give us the benefit of their opinion and not one filtered through either their, their client or, or the attorneys. And anything that smacks of that is going to probably provoke the same reaction from me in any other case I've got, uh, whether it's ex expertise in psychology or in structural engineers. You send it to your client or the attorney, and they make changes in it or suggest changes in it. Your that report becomes kind of worthless to me. So, um, the court's going to exclude the reports, uh, and in Dr. McMillan's case, uh, uh, any any subsequent report or notes that Mr. Uh, Botworth had uh, had uh, a hand in generating. Is that sufficiently clear, Ms. Rogers? Yes, Your Honor. My understanding is it's only one session that this occurred in that he had Mr. Butler take the notes, but I'll double-check the testimony. Well, you might double-check on that. The other thing is, though, that if part of a report uh, has, has some information based on notes taken uh, by Mr. Butler, then that report... I'm not, I'm not going to admit it. Just, I think it's just tainted, and, I, and I'm, I just don't know that I can rely on it. it and, and again, you know, this is a custody case. For years and years and years, the judges have been trying.
trusted based on their experience, what they've, what they've experienced in private practice or the knowledge of the law or what they've experienced in court to make these decisions. We don't have, have to have experts to tell us uh, necessarily uh, what's appropriate and what's in the best interest of a child. Um, sometimes they're, they're very helpful. But in this case, under the circumstances, I don't think these reports are going to be helpful to me. I'm going to have to trust my eyes and my own good judgment, uh, what I hope is good judgment. Thank All right, you. Mr. Hayes, if you'll prepare an appropriate order. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, that'll be the judgment report. All right, Madam Clerk, we have anything else that's still pending?